I'm Marilyn Wolf. This is Computers and Components, Chapter 1, Characteristics and Challenges in Embedded System Design. So, the design of embedding computing systems um, poses a bunch of different challenges. We often have to implement sophisticated functionality, complex op op uh, interfaces, but also the actual um, interaction with the real world itself is complex. And part of that complexity is real-time operation. The system has to respond not just on its own time, but to deadlines based on wall clock real-time operation. In many cases, uh, embedded systems have to be designed to be manufactured at relatively low cost. Uh, often, they're battery powered, they have uh, limited cooling budgets, and they need to be designed uh, for low power and energy consumption. And, to make life even more interesting, they're often designed at small teams uh, to tight deadlines. Now, functional complexity should not be underestimated in embedded systems. Embedded systems are not just very simple uh, machines. They often have to run sophisticated algorithms and even several algorithms in, in a pipeline or in parallel. Think about what a cell phone does, how it uh, uses the computer to communicate. Think about what a laser printer does. Very sophisticated algorithms. And in addition to the signal processing, the control, they often have to provide sophisticated user interfaces also. Now let's think about real-time operation. This basically means that you have to finish an operation by a deadline. A deadline is a fundamental concept. Now there are several varieties of real-time. You'll hear somewhat different definitions of them, but I'm going to use hard real-time to mean that if you miss the deadline, the system fails. Uh, some people limit hard real-time to safety critical, and I'm going to expand that definition a little bit. Uh, in contrast, soft real-time means that uh, the, the performance of the system is de degraded, but it doesn't totally fail. Now, computing for real-time is hard enough, but um, it's even more complex because many systems require multi-rate computation. That is, different tasks in the system have their own deadlines that occur at different uh, frequencies. Um, so juggling these multi-rate tasks is one of the key challenges in embedded system design. Software designers talk about non-functional requirements which include a lot of different things. Um, manufacturing cost is one of those items. A lot of embedded systems um, have to meet relatively strict manufacturing costs which may affect um, the performance of the microprocessor you use, the amount of memory, and so forth. Um, Power and energy consumption is also critical in a lot of these devices. In battery-operated devices, the more energy you consume, the faster the battery goes dead. Even if you're plugged into the wall, power consumption corresponds to heat generation, um, and cooling down the system not only costs money, but it may mean a fan that makes noise that you don't want to deal with. Uh, the design teams for embedded systems are alt often small, and they often have to meet tight deadlines. Uh, you know, a few months to design a product is, is fairly typical. And a, and a typical a, a example of a design deadline that's important to me is the back to school window. If you don't have your calculator computer design ready for the back to market uh, uh, sales window, then you have to wait an entire year. Now, why use microprocessors? Why not design custom logic, FPGAs? Well, the fact is that microprocessors are often very efficient because we can put software on them to do several different functions. So we can use one piece of hardware to do several different things. And not only does this simplify the design of your product, but it also makes it easier to take your design and modify it for the next product. Most products are not clean sheet designs. They're modifications of previous products. And software makes it a lot easier to take a design reuse part of it, modify part of it. Now one interesting um, observation for hardware people is that um, microprocessors are often the fastest logic. Um, you know, we can design a custom piece of logic to do something that a piece of software does. Um, and in the same technology, perhaps the, that logic would be faster. But microprocessors are often designed with more advanced technology, um, using large design teams that can use aggressive techniques like pipelining to make sure that 
their implementation runs very fast. So in fact, leveraging high-performance microprocessors is a good way to get efficient hardware. And the same goes for energy. Often a microprocessor is very good at saving energy because um, we can use a, ver a leverage the low power design of the microprocessor and use specialized software techniques to um, control the energy consumption. Um, but it's important to keep in mind that a lot of embedded systems are really what we call heterogeneous systems. That is, they have CPUs and software, but they also have some custom logic um, for particular functions. We use the term platform to talk about the hardware, the processor, the I.O. devices, the memory, and some of the associated software, uh, the drivers, um, power management software, that sort of thing. So um, the platform includes the I.O. devices, but a lot of platforms also can have more than one um, processor in them. Cell phones and cars are both examples of uh, computing platforms that have multiple processors. You may have heard the term cyber-physical systems, uh, which is a physical system that, that is controlled or inter interacts closely with a computer system. So a cyber-physical system has an embedded computer in it. Um, but in embedded computing, we tend to think about the digital and the software side. When we're talking about cyber-physical system design, we use additional techniques, you know, control-oriented techniques, to co-design the physical system and the cyber control. I think it's important to remember that computing is a physical act. As we sit in front of our computers, look at our screens, it's, it's easy to think of computers as, as uh, in software as cyberspace. But in fact, computing is a physical act. Okay? Computing moves around electrons inside your processor. That's what I mean by the physics of software. That takes time, it takes energy. Okay, And so we can't characterize some of the aspects of software that we really care about for embedded computing, that is real-time performance, that is energy consumption, unless we look at how the software interacts with the hardware platform. You put the, the same software on a different hardware platform, you're going to get different uh, real-time performance, you're going to get different energy consumption. So performance is a term that's used uh, in a lot of different ways. Um, and we need to make sure we understand what we mean by performance. Um, in general purpose computing, it's often not well defined, but, but in a lot of cases, people mean average case uh, runtime. Uh, in real-time systems, performance is related to deadlines. Right, You meet your deadline. And so this is a less forgiving definition than average performance, right? Missing the deadline by just a little is usually just as bad as missing it by a lot, okay? And remember that in a lot of cases, finishing ahead of the deadline may not help you very much, okay? So uh, when we analyze the performance of a bad computing system, we have to look at the system in detail at a bunch of different levels of, of abstraction. And we'll do this over the course of these talks. Uh, we have to look at the CPU, the platform, an individual software program, uh, real-time task, and, and we'll talk a little bit about multiprocessors too. So embedded systems are designed to complex requirements, um, real-time performance, low energy and power, um, low manufacturing cost. And these are very complex systems in themselves. They do sophisticated things. Um, and so the design of embedded systems is an important challenge.